Hello Internet, my name is John Hammond, and this is a video to showcase the 310 Bitcoin Challenge. Uh, this was released on the Internet about a week ago, just over a week ago, eight days ago now, by an anonymous individual who posted on Reddit, explaining that he had originally bought into the Bitcoin scene when it was just getting started, and now he wanted to share some of the love. So he created this puzzle, or the 310 Bitcoin Challenge, where you're given a single picture, or just an image, and there is 310 Bitcoin hidden somewhere, somehow within the picture. There are three other connected addresses that contain uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.31 Bitcoin, respectively. And so far, you can see the timeline where just today, at the moment of my recording, I think five hours ago, uh, the 310 Bitcoin funds were found, discovered, and taken. So that is, if you just do a quick Google search here, 310 Bitcoin, that is just over $2 million, at least United States currency. So that's pretty crazy and kind of incredible. Uh, cool, cool puzzle. And I can showcase at least just a little bit of the first two pieces, the 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 segments of this challenge. Uh, I am eagerly awaiting to hear the solution for the 310 Bitcoin or $2 million treasure and bounty. That's pretty awesome. Um, but so far, I would like to showcase this. The internet has been going in a little bit of a frenzy. Not a whole lot, not, not a big one, but you are seeing some news articles that are, that are flying a little bit. And I thought I would take advantage of this and totally jump on the trend and bandwagon. So I'll try and showcase what I can. The background, really, that's just necessary is that this individual is kind of nicknamed Pip, and there's so far been an online community that's come from it. Within the Reddit post, you can see lots of links and information, discussion, and articles that have kind of come from it. Um, and kind of through that, also some Google Docs, pages that actually have solutions leaked and visible, uh, and that's what I will try and showcase and, and, and go through here, along with a Discord server that will showcase some of this cool stuff. If we go ahead and take a look at the challenge, this website here is simply bitcoinchallenge.codes. You're given this kind of prompt here. There's 310 Bitcoin to be found, and this is the image that we have to work with. So far, everything but the decimal 31 or 0.31 Bitcoin has been found and solved. So I can zoom in here, and you can download this PNG image. What I'm going to do is copy this link, actually just open it in a new tab, Either or just download or whatever, grab the link, and let's open up a terminal so I can start to work with it. I'm going to make a directory to work in. I'll call this 310BTC. And I will wget to download the image. Now that it is downloaded, we can go ahead and just view it and make sure it is what we expect, and it is exactly that. Um, you can do a little bit of reconnaissance just kind of exploring this because this looks weird, right? Like, uh, it seems to be stained glass, I think. It, and there's a little bit more discovery as to how this image originally came to be, what was it actually made of, etc. Um, and what are these? What do these numbers mean, right? What do the numbers mean, Mason? There's just plenty of letters and other, other kind of strange things in, in pieces of the page. Down at the very bottom, it explains a little bit of the address and the actual Google, the Bitcoin wallet that you may need, um, signature here, and some seemingly hexadecimal values, or values from 0 through 9 and A through F, representing base 16, not just base 10, like we're used to seeing in, you know, the real world, I guess. And there's the simple Bitcoin logo. So we could explore that a little bit more, but the first thing that I would kind of recommend doing, and what seemed to lead to some kind of rabbit hole, or a little bit of fruition, was actually exploring the image in a tool called StegSolve. So if you haven't heard of StegSolve before, it is available online. You can just go ahead and download it. It uh, is actually visible in a repository here where you can go ahead and the second link, I think, has a, has a better. Oh, it does. It does have a wget link, so we can simply download it as that. I'll paste that in. StegSolve.jar. It is a Java archive, so you will run it as Java attack jar. Open up StegSolve. You can hit O to open the challenge.png. And it's too big to view all in one. That's totally fine. You can still hit, move the arrow keys or click through these panes here and kind of explore different ways to view the image, like a color inversion, XOR, as you can see up in the top left. Uh, and each individual plane or each significant or each specific bit in a binary 
the binary bits that make up the bytes that create the colors and the pixels and the and what is in the picture and what is in the image. If you get to the last bit in the alpha plane, you'll see that there is one line that actually has a little bit of information or something seemingly odd. Um, I can't zoom in on this, but we know that it's there and we can go ahead and save this if we wanted to. Also, we have a QR code that we can save and explore. So I will do that. I will go ahead and save as. Uh, originally, it will give this to me in a bitmap. I want to see if I can get it to a PNG, so I'll use ImageMagick to convert it. But let's just call it like output and I'll stop stegs off. So output is now just a bitmap. Let's go ahead and see if we can convert it to output.png. Cool. Did that happen for me? It did. Let's try it. Okay. EOG output.png. And you can see if we zoom in here, there is a steady line of seemingly pixels, black or white. So we can assume that this may be some kind of message or some kind of encoding. Uh, you may want to look at Morse code, maybe. Maybe that's a knee-jerk reaction to what you think of. Or, in fact, it may be binary. So we will have to carve this out. Also, we have the QR code. So let's go ahead and say and see if we can take a look uh, to actually determine what this, what this is. Um, I'm going to see if I can just take a screenshot of this. I might just have to cut it out. Uh, in fact, I'll do that. Let's open up... Pinta is a fine image editor that I've been working with, and I will go ahead and open the 310 Bitcoin, get our output, and let's just try and copy this segment of the QR code here. Okay. Now I'll create a new image that's about that size, and I can paste it in. I will go ahead and save this as QR code.png, and I'll try and evaluate it or scan it with ZBar image. Z and it gives us a link to bitcoinchallenge.codes register TAC 310. Okay, if we view this link, it looks like it will allow us to register. While it's possible to solve the, the riddle without registering, at this point I'd love to hear from you why I'd love to know who wins this challenge. So we can enter our name and our email address, and it asks, what is the SHA-256 hash of the data you've got so far? So SHA-256 of all the data on a single line. We don't have that just yet. We aren't quite there. So let's keep moving. Um, I know, just because I've kind of followed through this, this, this puzzle and explored a little bit more, that what we're seeing in that line in output.png is something that we can explore, but it's not going to be our first our first piece of the puzzle. Um, the 0 0.1 Bitcoin actually uh, finds its solution somewhere else. So I will showcase that a little bit. Let's actually take a look at the image one more time. And if I zoom in at this message down at the very, very bottom, all of these hexadecimal numbers, 511, B20, 332, etc. I'm going to go ahead and write these down just so I can kind of explore them. And I'll open that up in supposedly just a script. We'll call it um, notes. Pi or something. I'm just, so I'm going to write this in Python. Python is kind of my weapon of choice here. I'm going to use a shebang line so my Linux system will know how to handle it if I just mark it executable. And let's go ahead and write these down. Uh, I'm going to pause the video so you don't really have to particularly watch all this. But that is just the process of what I'm doing. I'm going to be putting these together. And I don't need them case sensitive. I don't particularly care. And I'll just uh, return the video once it's, I'll return back to the video once I'm done writing these. Okay, so now that those are all written down, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, that's just all going to act as one string in the notes that I'm working with here. Another peculiar thing that you may find if you just stare at the image long enough is that just a little bit above this segment of the page, you can see just barely, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, this date October 2nd, 2018. And that is, as we know so far, the start date of the challenge and when this puzzle really got kicked off online. So October 2nd, 2018, or Oct2, 2018. Um, we can play with that a little bit. And I am, please bear with me for some suspended disbelief in that I'm just going to associate to the solution here, but uh, this will take a little bit of fuzzing or just poking around to explore with it. But the real notion that we have here currently is key of 201810002. So 2008, October the 2nd. 
what you may notice is that now these are essentially all data that we can work with, right? Like, while this may look like decimal numbers, I mean, obviously it is, there, there are no hexadecimal numbers in there, it may still work as a shift within a hexadecimal range. So, actually, I'm just going to change the name of this variable as to uh, string, and let's say that hexadecimal can be the values that we would expect to see in a hexadecimal format, right? So 0, 1 through 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. So 0, 1 through 9, and then A being 10, B being 11, C being 12, and so on until we reach 15 in, in base 16. So if we were to consider this a shift cipher, or we were to tinker with it a little bit, we can go in one of two directions, right? If we were to iterate 1 to the next, just take that position minus the index of the other as we loop through each character or each digit here, um, we could essentially find something new. Maybe, maybe we'll have an interesting bit of information here. Let's try and do that. I'm going cold, so please forgive me if uh, I'm going wrong here. I'm going to check for i in range of length of the string and that will allow me to get the character that I'm currently looking at within the string if I say string i. And then the key character, I'll just change this to car, or how about string here and key care, can be key i modulus the length of the key. So we will wrap around the key over and over and over again, uh, depending on how far we are in the string. So now what I can do is I can get the index in where it would be in hexadecimal, and then I can subtract the difference, and I would essentially be doing the shift. I would essentially be subtracting the position and determining where the next character would be if I were to uh, shift them in a specific way. So. It's it's hard for me to at least try and explain verbally, but hopefully you'll see this in code here. What I can do is now that I know the index, I can have the string character, and I actually have the value. I can say string index can equal hexadecimal. So what I, where I would expect to find it in the hexadecimal set dot index of string character. Same thing with the key index. So I can take the string index where I found, let's say, 5, and where I found, let's say, 2 for the key, and I can subtract them. I can say that the new character can be, or let's say, new care index can be the string index minus the key index, all mod the length of the hexadecimal. So now the new character will be at that position in hexadecimal at that index. So I can print out new character, and I'll just use uh, a comma here to separate them. So now I know that I have those individual pieces. Let's go ahead and create a string for them. So let's just say new string. I'm going to create it as an array in Python so that I can easily append it and then join it at the end. Let's say new string will append with the new character. And then after the loop, I can go ahead and print out new string all joined together. Okay, so now we have hexadecimal. It looks like 310, 310, 310, 310. That just repeats a lot, seemingly to tell us that we're right, I think. Seemingly to say that, uh, well, you've got a little bit of information in that, and that seems to be trustworthy. Um, I think this is peculiar now, though, because this doesn't look like anything that could be particularly useful for us. But what I want to do is see it in those same three digit chunks, just as we had in the original image. They're kind of in these boxes, so maybe if we put them in threes, we'll have better luck. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just create another for loop for i in range length of new string. 
I'll start at zero and we'll actually move by three so that we can say uh, list or new list can be the new string at index i to index i plus three. And we can add that to our new list. So now let's check out what the new list is. Oh, let's actually... Oh, I should create that string as a string, sorry. Let's say new string can equal that string all joined together. So now it won't be cut up. Okay, now we have those three tens and those, those sets of threes all put together. Let's go ahead and experiment with those. If we were to actually just get the three tens removed, so three, four, five, six of them, we can cut those out. And now we just have those original. Let's view those as what they could be in, in decimal, right? Let's do some list comprehension. Let's say int of x base 16 for x in each of those. So saying that each individual uh, entry in that new list, let's convert it or let's consider it to be hex. What is it when it's decimal? 426, 252, 813, etc., etc. You may notice and this is something that I didn't particularly know to begin with, but a lot of these are peculiar numbers, especially in regards to Bitcoin, because they are under the number 2048. So I had to learn a little bit about this, and hopefully I can show you, but this is something called BIP39, <laughs> and I don't know a, a whole lot here. I, I am by no means an authority as to what this stuff is, but BIP39 is an example of a seed phrase or at least it's kind of the, the encoding that, that may be necessary necessary for it. A seed phrase is a list of words which store all the information needed to recover a Bitcoin wallet. Wallet software will typically generate a seed phrase and instruct the user to write it down on paper, and if the user's computer breaks or their hard drive comes corrupt, or whatever the case may be, these, this set of words, or the numbers that kind of associate with it for BIP39, will essentially be able to restore their... Bitcoin wallet for them. So generally a seed phrase only works with the same wallet software that created it. The BIP39 English word list has each word being uniquely identified by the first four letters, which can be useful when space to write them is scarce. So BIP39 word list. Let's check this out. This is a GitHub repo that explains a little bit more of what BIPs are. And holy cow. BIP39 mnemonic code for generating deterministic keys. There's a standard. Let's go ahead and check it out. That folder, BIP39. BIP39 in English, that's what I speak, we have 2,049 lines. So checking all this out, 2,048 at the very, very end. Okay, so maybe these numbers would associate with the words, and that is how we could recover the Bitcoin wallet. Let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is actually download this. I'll put this in our directory that we're working with. And now we can go ahead and say that, okay, decimals. And let's open up. Let's do a with statement because people like to yell at me for using context managers. With open english.txt. That's the file name for each of those. As handle. We can say contents can equal handle.readlines. And what I'm going to do is actually just strip these and make sure they don't have any crap in them because uh, they're very annoying. Readlines is not my favorite function. x.strip for x in handle.readlines. So if I were to check out contents now, we'd have all of those words, each one on the line. So we could kind of index with what those words may be. Now, we don't know if these are zero-based or not. This, that might be a tricky point. I'm going to assume that they are not zero-based. They're just referencing by line. So we should subtract one from what we're looking for. Let's get the first one, just so I can verify personally. Let's say context um, dot index of, or context decimals zero. Let's print that out. It's crystal. And... I want to add one to it, so it should be, oh, I'm sorry, I, we should minus one. It should be cry. Okay, so if we were to determine all of these words here, we could 
simply do that. We could say for index in decimals, let's print contents at that specific index. So now we have, oh, again, let's minus one on that. Cry buyer, grain, say vault, sign, lyrics, rhythm, music, fury, horror, mansion. And that is the first string that we want to be working with here. That is what we're using as our BIP39 string for this Bitcoin wallet. Now that we have that string, I want to save it and move on to the original other portion that I was discussing. So let's just say first string dot text. Next, let's review those original pixels that we thought we saw in the output.png file. That was the alpha channel, like the least significant bit in the alpha channel, that looked like it had some information that we could pull out of it, just at this specific line. So let's open this in a image editor. I'm just going to use GIMP here uh, to go ahead and view what that line is actually on. Let's check it out, output.png, that original file. I'll zoom in here, and just with a single pixel, I want to check out, that's on line Y of 310. You can see it down on the very bottom of my screen here. So now we can carve out each of those pixels. If I were to kind of scroll all the way at the very, very end, when will this finish? It looks like it goes until about 2798, so maybe 2800 XX position. Um, looks like the rest of it is not necessary. That's, that's not carved out of the image. So let's go ahead and try and dig those out. What I'm going to do is, again, work with Python. Um, I'll create a new script this time. I'll just call it, like, pixel carve or something. And we can go ahead and cut it out with the Python image library. So I'll get my shebang line started again. And we can say from pill, capital, you can import image, capital I here. So now let's go ahead and image.open, output.png. Let's just create an image object for that so we can work with it. And be sure to close it for good memory management or whatever. And let's go ahead and get the data out of it. Let's just say image.load. And we want line to be 310 that we saw. And we want max width to be, let's say, 2800, because I think that's a fine rear number, like even number that it may be expecting. So we can do this now. We can go ahead and carve all these out. Let's say for x in range of max width, let's go ahead and print out the data at the position of x and line, or the specific y that we're working at. Let's just, we can probably call that y as well. So X and Y. Let's see what data we get. We are getting 0 to 255, 0 to 255, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, well, let's go ahead and carve that. Let's say uh, 255 is white, correct, and 0 is black. So let's actually, we can probably go ahead and just create a new list for this. Let's just say uh, new string, as we've done before. Let's say new string dot append if this data is equal to zero new string dot append one and let's actually just make it a string so we can work with it as binary and if it is a 255 we can convert to it as a zero so now at the end of it all let's check out the string new string all put together. Lots of binary. Okay, let's see if we can get a message out of this. Let's convert it to hexadecimal. And I do want that to... Oh, I'm sorry. Let's actually... We want that to be considered a binary number to begin with. So let's take all this and consider it 2. Now we have a decimal number. Let's go ahead and convert that to hex. And let's see if we could handle it. Let's go ahead and say two cut off. So the zero X is removed from the very start to negative one. So we remove the L at the very, very end. And now let's go ahead and decode that from hex. And it looks like we have what could potentially be base 64. So in Python, we could, if we wanted to, go ahead and import base64, and then we can say, or we don't even need to do that, we can just simply decode it as base64 following that. 
looks like it says salted and then there's a lot of garbage or binary data that we won't exactly be able to see your process but this salted string just at the very very start tells us that maybe this is some encrypted data that's been put together with open ssl or another toolkit to go ahead and encrypt some information so now we've got another lead we track down that specific salted version of information in the base 64 string that was hidden in the image and now, speaking of the image, let's actually take one more look at it, because I think there's another interesting tidbit that we may not be looking here, is that those numbers that I mentioned earlier, these letters here that are kind of scattered across the picture, what do they really mean? How do they, how do they correlate? Well, we're kind of curious and just wondering what these curves are, or are they particularly doing? Um, if we were to copy them, or kind of, it looks like they're only on one half of the image, and not on the other, or maybe some stray oddities off on the side, but what if we were to kind of mirror them or flip them? So let's go ahead and try that. What I'm going to do is open this again in GIMP. Check out challenge.png, opened up just fine. And let's go ahead and try and select some of these curves here. I don't know how well I'll be able to do this. In fact, I'm not very confident that I will be able to do a very good job of it, but let's try it. So what I've been doing is just kind of adjusting the threshold on the quick select tool and trying to see if I can get at least remnants of the curve. And then I don't, I'm not particularly worried if I get some extras, like the lines that kind of follow it, because as long as the, oh boy, <laughs> As long as the original, like, thick line is there on its own, man, that one may be harder to get. Let's try and tone down the threshold. No, oh, still getting too much. I think I got just enough of it to kind of move on. I know there's one up here. trying to avoid selecting the entire image and just the pieces that I would like to see. Again, I'm just adjusting the threshold and trying to find a sweet spot where I can select enough of the curve, enough of what I'm looking for, so that I'll be able to select it and work with it. And so far, that's all I see. I've been holding shift that whole time to just kind of keep track of the selections I've already made. And what I'm going to do now, oh, it looks like I missed a tiny one. Dang it. Zoom in a bit to kind of uh, fine tune some of these. Sorry, I know this is painstaking and awful and probably very boring to watch, but hopefully our efforts will be rewarded. Not by two million dollars, but something. <laughs> not even, not even close to it. Not even, not even. Okay, at this point, I feel like I've covered enough of them that I can cop confidently kind of control X and copy one of them so that I can now paste them in another layer, create a new layer specifically for those images. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create that layer as a new layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this layer. I'm going to select the entire thing where I just have the curves visible, right, or the pieces of it that I... I'm kind of curious about and what I'm going to do with that entire layer once I have it selected I'm going to make sure that it is the same image size that I want so I'm going to layer to image size and then I'm going to go ahead and transform this layer I'm going to right click it and say layer transform flip horizontally so now both of those are visible and it looks like I just about have some lines correlating. In fact, it looks like it's not quite there, but if I were to drag this just a little bit, some of these numbers look like they're trying to refer to one another. Looks like there is a grouping that is potentially being displayed here with some of these letters and symbols. You can see kind of uh, just over on the 
top left over here, or I'll change the color so maybe it's a little more visible. I'll try and change the size. But L and 3 looks like they're coupled now with that with that line moved over. And 0 and 2 looks like they would be covered. Or o and 2, maybe. I think this, this D over here should be circled, and so it should have been on 7. So 7... L three zero two seven and five eight four five. You can see it's connected to an eight, connected to a four, and it looks like they're trying to connect a nine and an F. So if we were to put those together, let's take just take note of those. You don't need them in. A specific script, but we can say L3, 09, or I'm sorry, 0 and 2, those were connected. Um, it was 7 that was on its own because the, the D circle over there, 0 and 2 are connected from just that faint line there, nothing over on the far side. Um, 5, 8, and 4, as we saw, and 9 and F. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put these in notes or a, a new script where we don't need to go through all this, but let's keep track of these because we can, if we wanted to, determine any of the possible permutations of these letters. There aren't a whole lot of them. All of these letters, numbers, and symbols, these, these, these characters here, there aren't a whole lot of options that can kind of come from this. But, we don't know what logic or really where in the picture they should be organized or should be ordered. So we could permutate them and just do whatever we wanted to. And I'll, and I'll do that with iter tools. So from iter tools, import permutations. Let's say P or letters, how about that, can equal all of these as a string, let's just do P's can equal permutations of letters. And then for P in P's, you could literally just print P. And there will only be so many of these that we could actually possibly feasibly work with. Like if I were to try and Python, notes.py, these are all the potential possibilities we could work with. Uh, again, if you wanted to, you could hook this up in whatever way that you wanted to, to really get a hit and verify with it. Um, but I'm going to, again, suspend this belief here, but please bear with me, just jump to the known and public solution. After we kind of comment this permutation stuff out, we don't even need any more, uh, we can find that eventually the password or what we're looking for in this put together is the, I guess I'll, yeah, we'll just call it password because that is what it is, it is simply L379F4. Eight five zero two. So a specific permutation of these letters here, but that is the password that we're spe specifically looking for. So now that we have the decoded data, or we we have the base sixty four decoded data that we know is SSL encrypted, let's see if we can go ahead and decrypt it with, for some reason, potentially this thing, this uh, string or association of things that we may now know to be perhaps a password. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. What I'm going to do is actually take uh, this output as a variable, and I'm going to create a written word file for it, or just, just a file to, to put it in. Let's just call it encrypted.txt with write mode, and let's go ahead and write to it the output. So once I run this, now I should have a file, <clears throat> excuse me, I should have a file encrypted.txt, and we can go ahead and decrypt this given our password now. So we have, let's see, open SSL. That's the command and what we're going to be working with to try and decrypt this. And the mode that we're going to end up doing a lot of this in and being Bitcoin and the cryptography system that it uses is AES 256 uh, CBC, or I think it's Cypher blockchain. And then MD for MD5, the mode that we're going to be working with, and the data, tag D, taking in our encrypted.txt, and we'll put it in out as decrypted.txt. 
and then it needs to know a password, which we will use as this given, and it will successfully decrypt. So check out what we have here. Now we have a decrypted dot text, and we can display that on the screen. Well done. Now find something really interesting here. Looks like we got a good hit. This is this is the real thing. This is the Bitcoin challenge, and we're given again a same kind of message as we as we've seen previously in the original image. So we can work with our same note script to go ahead and decrypt this just as usual. What I'm going to do is actually copy this, and I'll go ahead and put in Sublime text. I'll cut it up, remove all the new line characters, remove all the spaces. I don't need a space in there, and let's go ahead and make this lower. So string can be this dot lower and let's go ahead and after we have worked with the bip39 string that that whole file we can go ahead and put together the the contents that we're seeing here so let's go ahead and print this debris slim immune lock actual tide gas vapor fringe pull flat glance giggle 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 <laughs> okay giggle looks like we don't need um let's get until pull flat and maybe that is something necessary now. Again, stuff we can put together with our string. And as I've come to find out, this should go ahead and decrypt what you need for the wallet for the 0.2 Bitcoin. It looks like I forgot the word glance in here too. Now, we have enough for the Bitcoin wallets, but I'm still curious as to what really is in this register page when it's asking for the SHA-256 hash of the data that we've got so far. So there's a little bit more left to do from the, that I want to showcase and that we can figure out what this register hash is because we're so close to collecting all of the data. But there is one more piece. There's one more thing that we just haven't looked at just yet because we kind of got carried away with some of our other leads. If we go ahead and run Stegsolve one more time, I'm going to go ahead and check out, okay, let's look at the challenge.png. Just as we'd seen before, we can look through this. We're looking at the alpha plane, etc. Great. The least significant bit there has the QR code and some other information that we can see in that line that we've decrypted already. But if you check out the red plane, go all the way to zero. or I'm sorry, not the red plane, but as you kind of explore through more of these individual planes, um, Stegsolve will go ahead and display the image with, with that specific filter or shades that your lens that you're looking at it through. And as you get to finally viewing the gray bits, the gray bits also have a little bit of information displayed, except the QR code is missing. This isn't the exact same lens as we'd seen before in the alpha channel. And this time it goes all the way to the very, very end, though the full width of the page. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's save this as solve.bitmap is perfectly fine. And let's go back to our command line and let's go ahead and move or convert solve.bitmap to, I guess I'll call it just graybits.png. So now let's go back to our script, pixel carve, and let's try and work with this a little bit. Let's actually comment out the code that we have just now or at least I suppose let, let, let's just change the line where we open up a new image and let's just change rather than output we'll use gray bits and then we're still looking at line 310 but we can go all the way to the very very end now of the image so let's just do image dot size one here so that's the that's the max width oh, I'm sorry zero because that's width and height so now we can check out what we have of our new string. If I were to print out new string as binary, we have a lot of information. Okay, interesting. Let's go ahead and see what our hex is. If I go ahead and print that output after we've converted all that doesn't look like anything useful to us particularly. So let's try and let's go try and go through the, some of these steps in, in a baby steps way. Um, now that we have it in binary, let's go ahead and convert it to a decimal. And let's get that in hex, just as we've done before. And if we wanted to, we could go ahead and carve some of the stuff out. Let's say 0 to go from cut out the 0x, 2 positions in all the way to the negative 1. That does not look like something that we could particularly see as real English. Okay, bummer. But what do we have here? 
How long is this string to begin with? We are viewing the correct... That is the correct line. Let's verify. Let's go double check. Let's open up GIMP. Let's check out graybits.png. I'm going to zoom in here just as we've done before. Switch to the pencil. I'll change the size way down low. And this is again at 310. Okay, so we're seeing things just as we should. And if we go all the way to the very, very end, it is all there. So we've got information. Maybe we are not interpreting this the way that we should. Because that is not a lead that we would expect. Let's consider if the gray bits are wrong, or the gray bit, if, if we saw in StegSolve that those gray bits are denoting that they're, it's not, it's not fully understanding. Okay, let's, I'm sorry, I hope, let's open up the original challenge image. That gray bits is showing something that we had seen in kind of a line in full red, right? Actually, I want to move back to that, but it's taking a long time to load these pictures here. It's funny how the alpha plane completely like will like invert all those. So we have full blue, we have full green, and full red. And you can see that that same kind of line is still kind of prevalent. So maybe it is the red pixels that we're seeing some piece out of. Let's, I wanna, I wanna get the least significant bit from, from red here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is actually just opening the original challenge and then let's not view these, but let's actually print out data X, Y and let's comment these out. So, yeah, you can see that in a bit, that the least significant bit here, 254, that's not a full, it's not full red. It's obviously trying to change something here. I think I, I see even one rather than a straight zero, so black. So it, the red channel is being peculiar. So let's let's sniff out just that least significant bit portion. Let's get zero. Okay, so now we're getting the red channel, as we saw. And let's go ahead and convert that to binary. Good. It looks like we're seeing the least significant bit as zero just about always because of just how Oh, no, okay, it is going to 1 sometimes. So let's go ahead and just, okay, index the negative 1, get the last the last value. It looks like we just have a lot of zeros at the very, very end. So that is strange, but let's 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 see. That can be uh, data, right, or um, color. So let's change the, let's get a same copy of this loop as we've done before. Let's say if color is equal to zero, um, because we, actually, yeah, we don't even need this loop. We can just simply append that as a string to, because we're just getting a zero or a one, so we don't need to determine what those things are. Let's just do new string that append uh, the string of color. And now let's print out what our string may look like. Ones and zeros, good. And a lot of zeros at the end. So maybe there's just something not particularly there. How many, how much is this? 144. And what's the size of this image? Image.size. The width that we saw earlier was 2094. Okay, so you subtract 144 from that and you get 228. Not obviously not 28, but 2800, 2800. So just as we saw with the original alpha colors, those all those are all bits that match up. So maybe we maybe they must go together. Maybe if we were to XOR them together. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to say that this is 
the string that we're receiving. So we got, we want to do both of these procedures, right? We need we need kind of both of these. We need both the alpha and what we're seeing from the red channel. So let's say that this is red channel. And I'm going to have to duplicate some of this code. This kind of sucks, but we can remove a lot of this. So that will get us the red channel and what we've seen before from output output.png that's going to give us alpha so if I were to print alpha am I printing the red channel? what's going on? Oh, my max width is now wrong because the max width was 280,000 as we saw. Okay, good. So we don't need to change some of those, but... Now we have alpha and the red channel. We're getting from those specific things. So red channel we only want until up to 2080, just as we saw. So we can XOR these together, right? Let's do that. Let's say for I in range, or let's just actually car carve these together. Red channel can equal that position. Good. We don't need alpha to be modified. So for I in range, length of red channel, or alpha, doesn't matter, because in this case we're just going 2008. So R can equal int of red channel at that position and a can equal alpha at that position so new can equal r x word with a and then let's just say final as a string to or a list that will convert to a string to handle this we can do final dot append new and at the final end of the for loop we will print out the final and we're getting an issue because final, oh, final is expecting strings here. So let's just convert that to a string. And we have a lot of ones at the very end. That's weird. Why is that? Maybe that's, maybe it's wrong. Do we have to flip these bits? So we can do that. We can say, Final can equal this. Let's flip the bit. So let's do final dot replace all zeros can be replaced with just a pipe, just as a temporary thing. Um, let's make sure that we save these changes. So update the variable as we do this. Replace all the ones with zeros and now replace all the pipes with ones. So now we have new final after we've replaced them all. Perfect. And let's go ahead and try and determine what this is. Let's do int final2, so that's binary now, and now we've converted it to decimal. Let's go ahead and try this as hexadecimal, which now we have some more information that maybe might decode a okay. Uh, let's try, let's see, okay, all these zeros are still in the way. So let's cut those out. Can I do that? Uh, print final. And let's get all the way to the last set of zeros. So that is 840 characters up to negative 840. So now we don't have those characters. We've carved them out. All those zeros can go away. And we can do final as a number again, just as we were doing before. Let's try that. Convert that to hex. Great, let's carve out the 0x and the L at the very end. Let's try and decode that to hex. And, oh, what is this? We have a data here in this? Is there something like in this? Is that a, maybe that's some kind of file. Let's just say data. Let's try and open something. 
and let's write it, let's write our data to it. So that's done. Once we've run the script, now we have a new file called something. We can check out file something. It is gzip compressed data. Okay, okay, awesome. Let's try and gunzip that so we can extract it. Gunzip something. Oh, it needs to know that it is a gzip file. So let's gunzip that. Unexpected end of file. What does that mean? Um, is the final stuff important? Let's let's try this one more time. Let's rem so that way we don't have to have. Uh, I I didn't cut out all those pieces at the very end. Maybe that padding is necessary. Let's try and move something to something dot gunzip. Good. Let's try and gunzip that. And it worked. It worked. Okay. Now what do we? Now we just have something itself. File something. ASCII text. More base sixty four. All right. Let's decode that. And it's salted again. So now we have a new string that we have to work with. Boy. But wait a minute. Well, we already have maybe what we could use from the original strings that we've been working with. This these these letters that we got from connecting those curves and the lines on the original image. We could roll through these permutations and try them again. We could just pipe them into that AES decryption command that we had worked with before to test them as we needed to. Um, and that is what I would recommend. That is how it should be done to actually de to test and determine if you can decrypt it. Again, just going to kind of move through this for the sake of showcasing a solution. And I'm going to show that the second password that we have now seen is password2 discovered it was 0 to L3 F9 5 8 4 7 so that is the second password and that is what we can use to go ahead and decrypt what we are receiving from this uh, second encrypted data so uh, two encrypted dot text and then we can go ahead and open SSL command as we've just done before to to encrypted to out to decrypted. It wants to know a password. We will paste in what we have just far. It should run successfully. And now we have this command to decrypted. And we get the result here. It says Bitcoin challenge. So we know we've got the right thing. It says you're either very, very close or working in the right direction. Here you go. There's this. Okay. So what we have right now is enough to put together what is necessary to determine the SHA-256 hash for the registration page. So the way that I'm going to end up doing this is actually catting out first string dot text, and we don't need all the second portion that we got out of it. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and open that up, and let's save that as first string just as we've seen. Yes, but let's save this as, I'm sorry, a second string as well, because we don't need to concatenate these. In this case, we just want Fury Horror Mansion, and that is going to be our second string, or our first string, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm getting these confused. It's because I'm saving them in, in a strange way, in a stupid way. Okay. Now in our command line, we can cat out first string, and we can cat out the decrypted data from the first one and let's actually remove all of the new line characters in that and let's go ahead and remove from the second one all of the new line characters in that and let's bring this to SHA-256 sum and now we have a potential SHA-256 string, except I did this wrong because I want all of that to go to SHA-256 them. And that as one full output, as the new lines are moved from all the things that we've received so far, that is the SHA-256 hash that we can go ahead and give to the registration site. So I'm going to say my name. I am John Hammond. My email address is this and we can paste in that SHA-256 hash. Go ahead and submit. Takes a little bit of time. 
And it says, perfect. This is a very special hash. So, awesome. This is everything that I was able to accomplish. There's no way I could probably figure out the solution for the 310, uh, the full $2 million worth of Bitcoins. But I did certainly want to showcase what I could follow through and to kind of understand uh, from the solutions that have been, been publicized and showcase them and show you how you can do them and also solve them, uh, especially if you're into this this puzzle solving, this capture the flag, cybersecurity, computer science mindset. So thank you so much for bearing with me. I know this has been a super long video, um, but we did work through what's necessary for BIP39 to determine the strings here, what you need for the wallets to actually go ahead and get the 0.1 Bitcoin or the 0.2 Bitcoin and actually retrieve a little bit of, of, of cool stuff. So thank you so much for, for sticking with me. And I hope you learned a little bit. It's been very, very cool. And I, and I hope this has been a worthwhile thing to show the internet. I want to end this video with a quick shout out and some love for the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I can't say this enough. Each and every one of you is really what makes this channel possible, what motivates me, what supports me, and what makes this a potential like life endeavor for me. <laughs> like I would love to be able to quit my job. Don't do that five like nine to five rat race anymore and, and piece together some cool stuff to show the internet. Um, so hey, if I could ever turn this into a livelihood, it's incredible, and it's all thanks to you. So, I can't say it enough. $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout-out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you early access to everything that release on YouTube before it goes live. Because I like to create some kind of, hey, I know YouTube's going to be releasing this stuff like gradually. Like, maybe on a daily upload schedule if I have a lot of stuff prepared in a backlog. But... If sometimes I don't. Right now, honestly, I've been in a funk. I don't have a whole lot of things recorded. I'm trying to bang through some Pico CTF 2018 and, and make some other cool things prepared for you. Um, but in the off chance I do, and maybe it'll someday come super duper helpful, whatever, five dollars a month on Patreon, a little bit of incentive, but it's really I, I I'm grateful for whatever you can do to help me as a dude, as a guy, <laughs> just try and put money on the table. So thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're the best. <laughs> I know this has been a crazy long video and it's been really weird to do, um, but hope you enjoyed. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Join me on Discord. There's a link in the description. Uh, our Discord server is full of CTF players, so capture the flag, programmers, hackers, computer scientists, engineers, cool, cool people. You can hang out with me and other awesome dudes uh, and get into the scene a little bit more. It's just, a, just an awesome way to do it. So thanks for watching, guys. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Later.